It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby! It is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast presented, of course, by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love all of you. Love Joe Dolan at FG underscore Dolan. He's the fantasy gangster. So much good information. Love the Lamar Jackson stat on yesterday's episode. Love the Josh Allen stat. You know, we forget these things, but these guys are not playing as well as they were earlier in the year. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We're at Ross Tucker pod. Still plenty of time to make sure you win your championship by going to fantasypoints.com and using the code 22FEAST. Joe, we begin with the Seahawks and the Rams here on episode two of the show that's so nice we do it twice. Uh, um, Ross, um, I know uh, we went a little long on our last podcast. Uh, I mean, what can we say about the Los Angeles Rams? I mean, they're at the point where they might shut everybody down. Cooper Cup's out for the year. Allen Robinson's out for the year. Matthew Stafford's dealing with a neck injury. I don't know if they're going to bring him back. Um, right now, this is a two-man fantasy show for me, and both guys are like fringe of fantasy options. That being Kyron Williams in the backfield uh, and Van Jefferson, who's their number one receiver by default right now with Bryce Perkins uh, at, at quarterback. Kyron Williams, three catches for 25 yards, 11 carries for 35. I mean, Cam Akers has eight carries for 37 but doesn't catch a ball from Bryce Perkins. Um, Van Jefferson catches three passes, but he at least scores on one of them. I mean, that's the Rams right now. It, look, their their MO should be right now trying to regroup for, regroup for 2023, if at all possible. You're already given a top five pick to the Lions. That's gone. That was the price you paid. Although you didn't expect it to be this heavy, it was always in the realm of possibility for your Super Bowl last year. You won the Super Bowl, accept it, move on. Don't do anything stupid because you want that draft pick to become like the seventh pick in the draft instead of the third pick in the draft. They need to try to regroup for 2023, if at all possible. Um, They are probably, uh, uh, let's just put it this way. They're probably going to lose this week to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, And look, it's just been that kind of season for the LA Rams. I I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback, whatever the case, it's not going to be good. Their offensive line's a mess. It's bad. Still pretty good offensively for the Seahawks. Their issue has been on defense. Yeah, Gino, um, Kenneth Walker is having a really weird season. Um, Unfortunately, by the way, unfortunately for the Rams, I don't think that's going to be the kind of team that's going to take advantage of the Seahawks' defense this week. Um, But if you want to play Kyron Williams because of what Josh Jacobs did last week, uh, by all means. Kenneth Walker, two touchdowns in that game against um, the Raiders. But he had 26 yards rushing on 14 carries, and he lost 13 yards on a carry. That is a guy, you know, he's almost like, he's a little more Barry Sanders, Saquon-ish than I thought he would be. Um, Greg Cosell compared him to a jazz musician. He's a free flower. I guess he's trying to find the pocket. Um, it, it Like, you know, the jazz the jazz term like the bass and drum pocket uh, uh, my, my boy Justin Barnes at fantasy points he'll tell me about Pino Palladino and how often he finds the pocket as a bass player but that's what I think Kenneth Walker's trying to do he's trying to find the pocket and sometimes he's off beat sometimes he's ahead of the beat sometimes he's behind the beat and then when he does find it though it is sexy but he lost 13 yards on a run and he didn't have a whole lot of success uh, against Las Vegas last week 39 yards from scrimmage but the problem is he's so talented that you just got to keep playing him and Gino just gets it done every week and what, the thing I love about Gino it's like right what just the same as when Russ was in his prime in Seattle oh Gino's going to throw for 328 and two touchdowns well DK Metcalf is going to sc- catch 11 passes and Tyler Lockett's going to score a touchdown you know where the production's going it's phenomenal they're like a mini Minnesota Vikings to me slightly worse just as awesome for fantasy because I want to play all these guys um, uh, against a Ram defense that, by the way, might not have Aaron Donald this week and maybe not for the rest of the season. Anything to talk about on the Rams? or do We already kind of already did, right? Kyron Williams, yeah, let's yeah. go to Dolphins like, and Niners. Let's see if John Wolford plays this week, yay. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mike McDaniel was talking on a Wednesday. Uh, Raheem Mostert, he is expecting to play this week. Uh, he didn't play 
uh, in week uh, in week 12 with uh, with the knee injury that they're probably managing. Unfortunately, because of short fields and Kyle Allen throwing bad interceptions, Jeff Wilson, like, absolutely flopped in the complete nuts matchup against the Houston Texan defense because they had short fields. Uh, 13 carries for 39 yards and a touchdown and left with some cramping. Um, that is not going to be the case this week. This is going to be, in my opinion, a back-and-forth game. And the Dolphins are now a team just like your your Seahawks, really. You play Hill and you play Waddle every week. You play Jeff Wilson every week, and you got to play Tua every week. I mean, this is a team Tua's in the MVP conversation, and justifiably so. He's blown away my expectations for him this year. Miami has executed their plan perfectly. But they've got guys. By the way, if, Ty, if Jalen Waddle's receiving prop is under 70 yards, freaking bet it. That guy's been printing money for me this year. Um, 85 yards, even when the starting offense was playing for three quarters last week against Houston, 85 yards for Jalen Waddell. Miami's a simple team every week, and there's really not a whole lot of analysis to go around. You you start your guys, you play your guys. And uh, yeah, is, is occasionally Trent Shurfield or River Craycraft going to catch a ball? Yeah, of course. But most of the production goes where you want it to go with the Miami Dolphins. Niners have a situation we need to discuss here at running back, yes, Joe. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, Elijah Mitchell is probably going to miss – I mean, I, I think he's certainly going to miss the rest of the regular season. He might miss the rest of the season with that uh, MCL spring, which I believe is in his opposite knee. Um, Christian McCaffrey is dealing with patellar tendonitis, which is going to limit him. Now, all of a sudden, is, is Jordan Mason – is Tyrion Davis-Price going to be involved? Um Really a rough, rough go of it here for the San Francisco 49ers. Christian McCaffrey clearly has been limited. He's clearly not been 100%, and it's completely limiting his fantasy upside. And just as we have been saying, yeah, two weeks ago, did all of McCaffrey, Kittle, Debo, and IU get it done? Yes, but that's not going to be the case every week. And when you see somebody like Jawan Jennings scoring touchdowns, as good a player as that guy is, he kind of reminds me – um, uh, they call him Mr. Third Down um, in uh, in San Francisco. Kind of reminds me of like Jason Avant when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles. Remember Jason Avant? Yes. Like he was never a fantasy guy, but there was always the chance that he was going to catch six passes and in, in any given game and take away from somebody who was more fantasy relevant. That's kind of how I view Jawan Jennings. And when Jawan Jennings is scoring a touchdown, you know somebody like Debo Samuel – George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk is going to disappoint. Honestly, in their cases, all three of them did. Debo Samuel's been dealing with the hamstring injury as well. So the 49ers, they're talented. They're loaded. The injury bug is catching up to them. They should – New Orleans is abominable. The, the 49ers should have beaten them by 40. That game was kind of in question. Fortunately for the 49ers, the Saints couldn't score last week. Who's going to score in the Bengals and the Chiefs? Feels like a lot of people. Uh, everyone? <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a great game rematch of the AFC Championship game. Jamar Chase was back talking to the media on Wednesday. Said, "Yeah, I had a hairline fracture in my hip. I'm good to go." He's gonna play. It looks like Jamar Chase is gonna play this week. He's gonna be back. Chase Higgins. Uh, what's the status of Joe Mixon? But Sir, Samaj P. Ryan came in and did a really admirable job last week. Uh, he didn't light the world on fire, but if you started him for fantasy, you were very happy with Samaj P. Ryan's production. Um, Hayden Hurst has been getting going six catches. I wonder if his role shrinks a little bit with Jamar Chase coming back. Um, I would probably lean away from playing Tyler Boyd, who caught just two passes against the Titans um, with, with Jamar Chase back. But the Bengals getting back to full strength or close to it with a matchup with Kansas City. Joe Burrow's playing good ball. And Joe Burrow is going to have a shot to put up some big time numbers down the stretch here uh, in this matchup starting with the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bengals are kind of one of those teams. They know where their bread is buttered, and they throw it to the guys who butters the bread. And that's the, and that's what I like from a fantasy perspective. So the Chiefs are really spreading around. Now they sign Melvin Gordon and Brian Edwards, Joe? Yeah, I don't, Brian Edwards doesn't do anything for me. Um, the thing about the Chiefs was, I, the one thing I used to say all the time was, with concussions, okay? Look, they're a severe injury, and we know – that, like, you don't suffer a mild concussion. If you have a concussion, you're out. But I also always used to say, when a guy is cleared from a concussion, it's not like a hamstring where you got to limit the reps. They usually play the guy. That was not the case 
with Juju Smith-Schuster last week. The Chiefs limited him in practice uh, and, and in snaps. It was a full-blown running back, a wide receiver by committee. Even with Kadarius Tony and Nicole Hardman out, we have to check on Tony's status. But Justin Watson led the wide receiver group in route share last week. Smith-Schuster was at 46%. Uh, Watson was at 72 Marquez Valdez-Scantling at 67 And Sky Moore was down at 28%. Now, Sky Moore, the Chiefs put him back there on punt returns, even though he's uh, never really did it in college, and he struggled. He's muffed a bunch of kicks. They are taking him off of punt returns. But Andy Reid is one of those guys who doesn't bench players for fumbling unless it becomes a real big issue. And Sky Moore has not fumbled on offense. He's still a role player, but he's been targeted on 12 of his 29 routes over the last two weeks. So when Sky Moore's out there, Patrick Mahomes is looking to throw him the ball. I'm not saying you play him here against Kansas uh, against Cincinnati, but I wouldn't be stunned if maybe his snaps start to creep up here down the stretch, and they look to get him a little bit more involved as the Chiefs make a push to the Super Bowl. Um, by the way, Isaiah Pacheco has handled 53 of the 66 running back carries from the Chiefs, but as I anticipated the last couple of weeks – he was going against the Charger run defense in Week 10 and ran for 100 yards. Last week, he was going against a Ram Ram team that couldn't score, so he was able to get uh, 20 carries in that game. I think this one's going to be a little more back and forth, and I wouldn't be surprised if Jarek McKinnon's a little more involved in this game. I don't know how much I expect Melvin Gordon to be involved, but he does have a versatile skill set, and the Chiefs do like that. You need to get a little bit more involved with last bottle wines. I know a lot of us love beer and wings or whatever, but our next sponsor has the hookup on wine for holiday gifts and get-togethers. When it comes to killer vino at drastically pro- low prices, we're talking 30 to 70% off retail. Fantasy Feast, Joe and I, we head straight for Last Bottle. I like the name of that company, by the way. If you don't know, Last Bottle is a daily deal wine site based in Napa. One wine every day until it's gone. No memberships. No commitment, free to join. Last Bottle has a deal just for Fantasy Feast listeners. Use promo code FEAST to get 10% off your next order with Last Bottle. That's lastbottlewines.com. Use code FEAST. Joe, it's the Chargers and the Raiders. Your boy Josh Jacobs going off. Absolutely off, and he did it through injury. He's dealing with ankle and calf injuries. The the Raiders are managing his practice reps this week. There is a chance that he doesn't play against the Chargers, which would be horrifying because the Chargers have been a fantastic matchup for opposing running backs. Uh, James Conner went nuts. James Conner, believe it or not, he had his first 100-yard game as a Cardinal against against the Chargers last week. This is a horrible, horrible run defense. Josh Jacobs, if he plays, is going to be like one of the top players on the DFS slate. Of course, there's the risk that he re-aggravates one of these injuries. Zamir White is probably the next man up to me, um, but in a potential high-scoring game, Amir Abdullah might get some run as well. Josh Jacobs went absolutely psychotic in that game, um, but we do have to monitor his status. To me, the Raiders are a two-man fantasy show unless you want to i mean you can dabble in Derek carr you can absolutely do that but uh unless you want to like take a shot on foster moreau uh at, at tight end and foster moreau is one of a group of like 15 tight ends who you could choose between every week and maybe pick the best one um it's a two-man fantasy show jacobs and Devonte adams unfortunately we have to watch the status of josh jacobs this week with after one of the all-time heroic performances for fantasy 303 yards from scrimmage and two touchdowns through two injuries. Unbelievable, Josh Jacobs. Chargers? Justin Herbert's a completely different player when Keenan Allen's on the field. Like, completely different. Uh, Even though Keenan Allen went for five for 49 and he did score, Justin Herbert's out there slinging the ball around confidently. You know, DeAndre Carter's getting open. And then, of course, Austin Eckler out of the backfield. The big disappointment for me for the Chargers was Gerald Everett, only four for 18 last week. But Josh Allen, uh, look, Mike Williams might be back this week. I'm not sure about that. Maybe he'll be limited. Josh Palmer's been filling in admirably. But, man, do I love Keenan Allen and do I love Justin Herbert playing with Keenan Allen. The Chargers, despite all their injuries, despite all the problems that they've had, they are right on the doorstep of the playoffs in the AFC. 
This and and you gotta beat the Raiders. You gotta beat the Raiders if you're gonna get there. I am really excited for this game. The Chargers are kind of a team that you know what to do with for fantasy, with the exception of Mike Williams' status, which we won't know just yet, and also um, at the tight end position with Gerald Everett. If Mike Williams doesn't play, Josh Palmer is once again on the fantasy radar. But I think this is going to be a fascinating matchup and an exploitable one for Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Let's get to the night games, Joe. Cowboys, Colts on Sunday night. So by our run game metrics, our run grade at fantasypoints.com data, the Colts have the fifth best run game matchup of the week. Dallas has been exploitable on the ground. Jonathan Taylor has 20 plus carries and a rushing touchdown in three consecutive games. The Cowboys defense, we know it's elite. I think it's number one in DVOA. We know it's elite, but it's most exploitable on the ground. And if the Colts have any hope of winning this game, it starts and ends with Jonathan Taylor. The Cowboys shut down Saquon Barkley behind a decimated uh, Giants offensive line on Thanksgiving, but they've also given up big games to Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and Khalil Herbert of late. So this is a matchup where you can get exploited on the ground. The Colts are going to come out and they're going to run the ball with Jonathan Taylor. I think the Cowboys know they're going to run the ball with Jonathan Taylor. Matt Ryan is going to be under complete siege uh, in this game through the air. The, the, the Colt, I don't think the Colts are going to win this game. I think it's a bad matchup for the Colts. But if they are, it's going to be by giving the ball to Jonathan Taylor. And if you're playing a receiver for the Colts, I mean, Paris Campbell's kind of a wide receiver three. At the very least, we know Matt Ryan throws the ball to Michael Pittman. He is a viable uh, receiver each and every week. I'm a little skeptical because we talk about the tight end position every week. I'm a little skeptical that Jelani Woods is going to be the kind of guy who's going to come in and all of a sudden be a consistent fantasy option after what he did on Monday night. It's worth a shot. He's very talented, but I think he's way more of a dynasty and keeper guy than he is somebody I'm going to be playing against Dallas uh, this week. What about the Cowboys? So there is one thing that really is interesting to me about this matchup. The Colts slot corner, Kenny Moore, and he's a good one, injured his shin on Monday night. And the Colts could be down their best slot receiver. That's obviously notable because CD Lamb runs about 60% of his routes in the slot. Now, when he went down, Kenny Moore went down, the Colts put in Tony Brown, a special teamer who hadn't played a single defensive snap all year, into the slot. And Jeff Saturday insinuated after the game on Monday night that he did that because Isaiah Rogers, who has some experience in the slot but has been predominantly an outside corner in his career, was sick during the week and his conditioning wasn't up to snuff. So Isaiah Rogers, by the way, has been one of the best corners in all of football this year that nobody talks about. Over the last five weeks, he's averaged 0.11 fantasy points per coverage snap he's allowed. That's fifth best among qualifying corners. Now, that's mostly as an outside corner. The question I have is, do they move him inside to counteract CeeDee Lamb? Because we know Stephon Gilmore won't go in, and we know Brandon Faison isn't pro- is probably not going to go into the slot. That's if Kenny Moore misses this game. I am very fascinated to see, because this is a very exploitable matchup for CeeDee Lamb. Um, as for the Cowboys... You play Lamb every week. Let's see what happens with the Odell saga. Um, you, you, I think you have to suck it up and play both Pollard and Zeke. Dak Prescott is a top 10 fantasy quarterback because he also loves throwing the ball to tight end Dalton Schultz. It's the Bucks. It's the Saints. And it's another kind of bummer Monday night game, Joe. Um, I mean, Ross, I mean, if you're – punting on fourth and two from like the 36 because you're afraid Tom Brady's going to throw a pick or whatever Todd Bowles excuse. Come on. Come on. Like, what are you doing? They handed that game to the Cleveland Browns last week. Yeah, that and th- was bad. this division, which should not be in question right now. You've got three of the worst teams in the NFL in this division, the Saints, the Panthers, and the Falcons. And the Buccaneers are a half game up? Come on, man. That being said, I think they're going to kick the Saints' asses this week. I think Tom Brady, there's one matchup that I think is going to be exploitable to him. Did you know? Here's here's a, here's a, a stat for you. 
Chris Godwin, since he returned from that, like, remember he, he they kind of rushed him back from the knee and then he picked up the hamstring and then he missed weeks two and three. He returned in week four. Since then, he's played every game for the Buccaneers and has caught at least six passes in every game. Wow. Quietly, somewhat quietly. He's coming off of season highs and catches and receiving yards against the Browns. He caught 12 passes against the Browns with uh, the slot corner Greg Newsom out with a concussion. Playing the slot for the New Orleans Saints is Chris Harris. Over the last five weeks, now Chris Harris used to be a shutdown slot corner, but he's 33 and he's not that guy anymore. Over the last five weeks, his .37 fantasy points per coverage snap are second most among slot corners with over 100 coverage snaps over that span. He is an exploitable matchup. I think Chris Godwin catches 10 passes again in this game. And then, of course, there's uh, Mike Evans. That relationship is bizarre. Brady sailing the ball. I don't think Evans looks as explosive. We'll see if Marshawn Lattimore, Evans' nemesis, is back this week. If he is, even all the more reason for Brady to throw the ball to Chris Godwin a million times. And then, of course, we have to monitor the status of Leonard Fournette. But Rashad White has earned a much bigger role going forward. What, if anything, do we need to know for the Saints? Well, I, I mean, you play Chris Olave at this point. Now, here's the problem with uh, um, uh, Alvin Kamara. It looks like his role has shrunk, but it really hasn't. Like, it really hasn't sh- shrunk. Um, he's handled 88% of the backfield expected fantasy points over the last four games, despite averaging just 14 opportunities per game. The problem is this offense is atrocious. It's averaging the second worst points per game and just 14 first downs per game over the last month. Those are second worst in the NFL. The Saints cannot move the football. And I just, look, I know Andy Dalton's played some good games, but I just don't know what Jameis Winston, what is the deal with Jameis Winston? You think like they'd try, Ross, they can win this division. And they have all the incentive to. They don't have their first round pick, which is currently sixth. That goes to the Eagles in the Olave trade. They have all the incentive to win this division. So I am really flabbergasted by what's going on with the Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton thing, because look, yeah, Dalton can play a good game here and there, but most more often than not, you know what, what's going to happen with Andy Dalton. He got shut out last week. This offense is broken. I just don't know what's going on with the Saints. I know what's going on when it comes to fantasy football. Thanks to Joe Dolan at FG underscore Dolan on social media, fantasypoints.com. Love the glorious code that is 22 feast. Remember, you can see the highlight clips of this show and all the others, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Other than that, dessert was delicious. I'm stuffed. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.